Okay, sorry about that, guys. Um, uh, there, <laughs> there is something going on. Anyways, um, so when we refuse to repent, this is called pride. And you know, the thing is, is, we have a lot of a lot of things where we excuse it. Okay, I I don't go to church anymore because they were they're full of hypocrites. Pride. I haven't. I don't go to church anymore because I was hurt once. Pride. Um, I don't talk to my mom anymore because she did me wrong. Pride. See, these are these are these are situations of pride. Um, or when we justify what we've done, um, when we justify what we've done, um, either to God or to ourselves um, or to our friends, this is also pride. Okay. Um, having pleasure in self. Um, where basically you think higher of yourself than you should. I'm a really good person. Or, oh, I'm a pretty good person. You know, this is very, very dominant whenever people um, start talking about child molesters. Um, you know, I'm not, obviously not commenting on child molestation, but sometimes when we're talking about child molesters, we forget that we aren't the prize either. You know, um, and we make it out like, we just rag on them so we feel better about ourselves and all the bad, dumb things we're doing. Oh, I may be bad, but they're worse. See what I mean? And um, we just kind of give ourselves this false sense of superiority. Pride. Um, also having an unteachable spirit. Somebody tries to tell us something, somebody tries to show us something. Um, maybe our parents try to teach us something or whatever. A pastor tries to show us something, whatever it is. And we don't ref we refuse to listen. We have an unteachable spirit. This is due to pride. Um, so it, it, pride is refusing to submit. It's having an attitude of superiority. Um, so it, when you have when you have a conflict with someone and you don't um, and you don't make amends, uh, you don't resolve the issue. Um, even if even if you were completely not in not in the wrong, you are still called to be a peacemaker. Um, so. Uh, trusting in self, uh, another way hum uh, pride shows itself. I don't need that. I'm basically good anyways. I was right. Okay. Uh, trusting in hurt. Uh, I don't go to church because I, a, a hypocrite there hurt me. Trusting in the thing. Doctors can heal me. See, I mean, it, these are all examples of pride about trusting in, in, in things or in hurt or in self. It has nothing to do with God. And only the only true source of humility comes from God. And I'll show you why in a second. Um, so then what is false humility? False humility. False humility is where you focus um, on one's own failures and, and inabilities. I'm such a screw up. I'm just totally... I, I'm. I, Comparing oneself to others. I'm such a worm. I'm just so sinful and wicked. I don't know how anyone could love me. These are examples of false humility. Um, where you compare yourself to others um, or when you draw the focus onto yourself. Um, it makes it sound like it's humble. Oh, I'm such a worm. That's not being humble. Being What is it? Self-deprivating? Depri I forget what the word is. But that's not being humble. Humility is being teachable. When somebody tries to tell you something and you listen, even if they're not absolutely right, you still take it with a grain of salt, you still analyze it, you still see how it can apply to you, you judge yourself. Do I have the right attitudes? Am I, am I acting right on this? So, I mean, you accept it from other people, and you accept it from yourself, you accept it from God, you're teachable. Uh, next is being modest, um, where you don't think too highly of yourself. Um, um, in other words... Um, you know, uh, if somebody receives a compliment right next to you about something that you do as well, I'll give you another example, okay? You play guitar, and this other person plays guitar, and somebody gives a compliment to the other person who plays guitar but doesn't give you a compliment. Some people would take that as an insult because um, they're not being modest, whereas other people would be okay, and they'll, they'd be secure in that fact. Okay, so they got a compliment and I didn't. It wouldn't bother them because they're modest. That's another way that um, true humility contrasts with pride. Um, to see others as more important than yourself. You know, oh, I need to do this for them because they're just as... It's not all about me. Um, also, uh, to compare oneself to Christ. Um, I may think that I'm real good, but 
how does my character compare to Christ? If Christ was in this situation, would he have done the same thing? See, what we do is we compare ourselves with ourselves or with other people. Um, so among ourselves, I should say. Um, and and how, the, how this hurts us is we get this idea, because we're comparing to other imperfect people, how much better we are than them, or we try to measure, measure up to them. Um, or we get in a sin, and we try to focus on overcoming that sin rather than overcoming, or rather than focusing on God. Our, our, we're not comparing ourselves to Christ. Um, to define yourself as the Bible says you are, rather than, oh, I'm a worm, whatever. The Bible says that we are created in God's image, that we have the breath of life in us, um, that we, um, see what I mean, that we are a new creation in Christ. It says all these things about us, so define ourselves as oh, the Bible says we are. Um, so, um, repenting of, cry, of pride. I hate that. Why does it do that? There we go. Um, repenting of pride, overcoming sin by grace. Sorry, that's that's my son. <laughs> so, um, repenting of pride. This is um, um, how we how we overcome sin. Proverbs 15.25 says, The Lord will tear down the house of the proud, but he will, he will establish the boundary of the widow. Um, obviously, contrasting things there, the widow being, being potentially the most um, um, ignored and overlooked person um, in, in this time um, in the nation. Um, which also is, is kind of a resounding thing. There's often people who are overlooked. Uh, 30, verse 32, He who neglects discipline despises himself, but he who listens to reproof acquires understanding. Um, James 4, 6-10 But he gives a greater grace. Therefore, it says, God is opposed to the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Submit, therefore, to God. So there's submit. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. So you can't blame your problems on, on, on Satan, because he will flee from you. Um, draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be miserable, and mourn, and weep. Let your laughter be turned into joy, into mourning, and your joy into gloom. Humble yourself in the presence of the Lord, and he will exalt you. Now, what is it saying there? Well, there's a few things. First off, be miserable and mourn and weep. Let your life to be turned into mourning and your joy to gloom because the things that you're finding joy in are not God. In other words, let that humble you so that you can find joy in God. Um, you know, purify your heart, you double-minded. I mean, the, 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 really, I encourage a study on this, but basically what he's doing is He's talking about putting your faith and your trust in God, and he's talking about um, uh, following His ways and, and 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 letting your letting the you die. Um, I don't really have time to do a good exposition of this, but um, just think about that. So we often put pride in ourselves, our abilities, and our hurt, even as Christians. Okay. That person wronged me. That this. That this. Never go to another church unless um, this situation is resolved at the old church. Um, pride dries up grace in our life. Okay. So God, God is giving us grace. He's giving us power to, to, uh, to, to deal with them, to deal with the situations. He's giving us his favor. But then, as we are prideful, that dries up and is removed. Okay. So first off, submit to God. He alone is sovereign. Okay, second off, resist the devil. Decide not to sin before you are tempted and intercede for authority. Okay? Um, oh, my authority to this, intercede for them. See, the thing is, is God doesn't want us to be praying for destruction on things. He wants us, he wants us to be standing in the gap for things. Um, so resist, resist the devil. You get tempted to do something, and you resist it. You move on. Draw near to God. See God in light of your failures. Yes, I, yes, you probably did mess up, but seek God because of it. Lord, I messed up. I'm leaning on you. Um, cleanse your hands of sin. Cease action. Get rid of possessions of impurity. Resolve the conflicts. Make sure your hands are clean. 
Purify your hearts of double-mindedness. Do you really want to hate sin? Do you really want to live differently? Do you really want to surrender and, and have something different than it is now? So, um, the proud have chosen both the praise and the methods of the world and are acting as God's enemies. Okay, The proud, by nature, do things contrary to God's ways. They do things contrary to his character. Okay, The humble man does things God's ways. And that's the, the way he has, he has um, God's best interest in mind. Um, when we reject our authority, God brings others by to teach us. Let's say, for instance, we had a mom that we hated growing up. And so then we go, we go out to college, and you know there's someone um, who is an authority that acts just like our mom. So then we go out to, to the real world you know, and get a job and all that, and then we have a boss who's just like our mom. So I mean, God will bring by those people to, to keep working character in us, because God doesn't give up on us. A spouse that says what a mom or dad used to, you get married trying and getting away from your parents, and then um, the spouse turns into your parents. So, uh, don't do things which aren't in your authority. The pastor doesn't write speeding tickets. Okay. Uh, what I'm saying here is. Always be aware of who's who's in authority. Okay, sometimes we try to do things and it's not in our in our authority. You know, let's say you're in a church service and some somebody else's kid is acting up. So you're gonna go over there and give that kid a piece of your mind. That's not in your authority to do. See what I mean? The pastor doesn't write speeding tickets, does he? See what I mean? We try to find someone who will agree with us. And so we, for instance, oh, this person's a doctor. What is their doctorate in? Oh, puppeteering. Well, then why are you asking them about theology? So I mean, it's the exact same thing. We um, we turn to people, or we act as though we are in authority when we're not. I don't stick your fingers where they don't belong. Once again, I already said don't don't reprimand somebody else's child. Um, don't um, you know? Uh, my goodness sakes, know your place in the world, and be comfortable in that. But don't try to take everybody else's place. Don't try to um, take your spouse's place. Don't try to always rise against your parents. Before you do, ask who is an authority in this situation. Are you sure it's you? Um, don't ask why are they an authority. So, I mean, if you're constantly asking why are they an authority, you're going to be a, a judger of the law rather than a doer of the law. Um, so, who is an authority? You know, sometimes we'll we'll think that we are an authority, but actually we're not. So. When authority makes you angry or uncomfortable, submit yourself to God's scalpel. And we'll look at the scalpel of God in a second. Um, but God is trying to work something into you, and he loves you too much to leave you in that sin. Okay? So when somebody makes you angry or uncomfortable, submit yourself to God's scalpel. Allow it to happen. Is there ever a reason to disobey authority? I already I talked about that. Uh, God doesn't war against himself. He makes a way. Okay. Oh well, God told me to go to the go to this um, to this Bible college. Yes, but He appointed your authority, and your authority said you shouldn't go. With that being said, if it really was God, God will make a way. He'll change that your authority's heart or whatever. Um, so this is how God's chisel works. Okay, this is God's hammer of authority, circumstances, finances, whatever, and this is God's chisel of authority, circumstances, finances, whatever. Uh, this this could be the father, this could be mother, okay, and here's you, a diamond in the making. And what happens is when you harden yourself and the chisel is trying to soften you, you are cracked and soon beyond repair. Okay, in other words, there'll be permanent damage, um, and your your character will be forever scarred. Um, so about that boy who decided to go to call and go to Bible college, okay. Number one, emotions and feelings never take supremacy over authority. Okay. What I feel, or what I, yeah, what I feel never takes supremacy over authority. Um, remember that chart that we said, Bible, authority, finances, peers, prayer, circumstances, conscience. So your conscience is way down there, okay? Um, God placed the Father in authority, and if he really wanted the boy to go, he would change the Father's heart. God will also answer with finances, did the boy have the money to go to Bible college without school loans? Because um, remember, loans, that's not actually your money. 
God wants to work character in the boy through his father, and he also wants to work character in the father. The father realized that the son's attitudes of ungratefulness and stubbornness would cause him to fail in ministry. Responding correctly will begin to change the boy's character. Okay? The father wanted the boy to get a real degree so that if the ministry didn't work, he would have a fallback. The father didn't want the boy to not have a retirement plan. See, what happens now is that boy is going to be able to build up for retirement and then have something to live off of rather than being a 70-year-old minister with nothing to live on and health problems. Realizing our authority's motivation for their action causes us to appreciate them and respond with patience and love. Find out your authority's motivation. If even Jesus submitted to his authorities, why shouldn't you? If even God did this, why should you not? So I hope that, that let me go back and make sure I hit everything that I wanted to. Um, God doesn't war against himself. I really want to touch on this. Um, you know, if God put the authority in position, he can do something to work around the authority if you should so to choose. You know, if God gave this, he wouldn't give another message to go against it. See what I mean? God doesn't war against himself. All right? God doesn't war against himself. Um, So what happens is our, our authority figure will, will make us mad, and we can choose to either get angry and bitter, or to you know and, and harden ourselves, or to soften ourselves and allow God to do a work. That's what I mean. Yes, God, my boss bothers me, but I'm going to stay here and I'm going to do the best job that I can. Um, so that closes the yeah the, the, the deception course. As I said, it's circular. Um, I will upload one more video, which will uh, be a conclusion to the class, um, and that will be it for this class. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned a lot. Um, remember, this class is more applicational theology, um, trying to make things not so um, head knowledge as, as how it applies to your life and how to um, work it out um, into, into, into growth. Um, I, I, once again, I hope that you enjoyed the class. Um, I personally love this class. A lot of things in it um, that I have learned. Um, oh, I missed I missed reading one passage here, John 5:19. Therefore, Jesus answered and was saying to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, the Son can do nothing of himself. And this is something he sees the Father doing. For whatever the Father does, um, these things the Son also does in like manner. Okay. So, um, I hope that that made sense. Um, I, I hope that uh, this lesson was beneficial for you. Uh, God bless.